Hi guys and welcome to Football Syrupist for a new interview since I have the chance to have another great guest at my side today, um, Carlos Gangs, Michel uh, Ribeiro. How are you doing, Michel? I'm doing excellent. A little bad weather, just finished the training session with a lot of rain, but okay, but the training session was good, so that's the most important thing. Okay, perfect. Michel, you, you're the technical and individual coach of Gangs first team and reserve team, as well as for their academy's top prospects who therefore play in the U18 uh, or above so my first yes, question yes. is exactly are your uh, technical sessions always individual and how does your weekly planning look like looks like so it's a it's a lot of sessions uh, so it's average an average of two sessions a day what i give and of course with meetings and uh, you sit down with players so it's a little bit of everything Uh, but my training sessions, it, it depends, it depends. So if I do my individual work, sometimes I take one player with me, sometimes I take four players with me. Uh, I do, uh, you know, two days before the game, like today. Uh, we have a game on Sunday. So with the first team, uh, two days before the game, I always give uh, some attacking patterns to our strikers, our five, the the five players that are playing in, in the attack. So they will have some footwork in combination with runs and uh, a little bit of everything, so what they need for, for the game from Sunday. So that's a part uh, what they do with me. Um, my technical sessions are with the 18s, with the second team and with the first team uh, once a week. And then I will I will do a lot of footwork in combination with uh, with, with patterns to goal. So, but it's, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. It's what, I, what, I, what I think the players need, um, you know, what I see sometimes in games, I need to work with this on, on him, uh, with him. So I put it in my mind, I, I read it on a little piece of paper and then the next day or two days after, I will uh, talk with the coach, with the head coach and then we will uh, we will work on that. Okay, and how different is your job between first team and academy players? Because you told in uh, you told once in an interview that you always try to give players in development the whole package, but I assume you, you can't do that with all first team players since it's surely more a, a short term walk. So yes. focus with them only on certain strengths and weaknesses or how is it? So uh, in the academy, if you work with academy talents, uh, even with the guys from the second team, uh, you you work with them in three, I work with them in three positions. So we try to develop in, in, in more positions. When they go to the, to the first team, I'm sorry, uh, when they go to the first team, of course, it's what the, we see what they need. Uh, the 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 strengths, the weaknesses, what what we have to improve and everything. But it, this is more from the position that they are gonna play. On, for example, we have a Sunday game. If the coach asks me, uh, this guy uh, will play as a left winger on Sunday, and they will give a lot of space in the back. I'm gonna work with him on 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 that point. Uh, so the first team it's a little different, but the approach of a technical training of of technical training. Is the same with the first team as with academy. So I try to develop players. I, I try to give them the total package. So they're never never done with me, with working on the weak foot, on the strong foot, uh, even in crossing and volleys. So it's a yes, it's it's a whole all packages. And do you also work on the defensive aspect? Uh, no. no, no. Defensive aspect. We have other spe uh, specialists. You know, we have the the other assistant coach and the head coach. Uh, you know they they do the tactic tactical work with the team, and me I'm just the guy that that need to uh, they need to make sure that the guys are technically uh, good developed that they will not panic in a game they will always be comfortable on the on the ball and that's the thing that we believe very much in in gang even like first team but all through that through the whole academy we try to make the kids uh, very comfortable on the ball by by doing a lot of ball mastery but a combination of ball mastery with Uh, 2v2s, 2v1, uh, so you can do a lot of stuff. And talking about uh, first team players, how different is it to coach players from more or less the, the same position, but with a completely different profile, like Van Zeir, uh, Onwachu, or Enesunal, you, you you had the yeah. the three, well, well the, these are three completely different strikers, and you had them three. Yeah. So for example, for example, if you work with a, with a player like Paul Onwachu, Uh, I've been working with him for three, four years. So Paul is a very, very tall guy. Uh, so I, I worked a lot on his footwork, but also on his mobility uh, to do some fast turns, things that he 
didn't have because yeah because he's a very big guy. Uh, Dante Van Zer, he was the guy playing on the nine, but Dante is a very fast player, you know. So Dante needed more um, clean layoffs, clean turns, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, a little, a little bit more working on his first touch towards the goal, uh, you know. So so it's 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 what they need. So we always are working with them. We see the games. Uh, and when they lack a little bit on 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 some details, I will work on on those stuff. But uh, for everyone, it's it's a little different. But we also have players that are a little similar, so it's easy for for me to take uh, those two players. I work with the same on the same aspect, but it's also uh, it's also okay to do a combination. For example, you do this with those guys in the same exercise. You help the other ones improve in in the turning, for example. And you you said well uh, on what show you used to to work on lot on how he he, he needs to turn uh, with with on what true and um well the using the sole of the foot is, is key yeah. uh, in in this regard so is it something you uh, i know you used to teach uh, you used to to train kids uh, before uh, at the academy and is it something you you work a lot on because in the end uh, it's not that Instinctive, instinctive to to use the sole of the foot if you don't really uh, repeat a lot. The, yeah, it's uh, for, so. For example, in Genk, like my son is a technical coach from the under 16 until the under seven. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, footwork, but also a lot of turning with the with the sole of your foot. You know, uh, we don't want we don't like the guys to to control a ball too much uh, with the sole of the. Foot because we want to keep the ball moving but it's not always possible so sometimes you will be uh, for example standing in the corner so you need to give you need to give the players some some different um, options you know for example to turn away with the soul something that that the opponent don't exact uh, don't accept uh, yeah, uh, Ex -ex -ex don't expect don't expect yo know? so we need always to 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 have something or to um yeah to give them more than just a first control with the inside of the foot or so that's why we 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 see that the guys improve a lot to do some uh, some work with the, with the sole of the foot and even in the games yeah you see first team players you see academy players all doing the same uh, the same stuff it's of course it's because of the the repetition that we that we have in the club yeah and the solution to use the the sole of the foot maybe a bit more is playing futsal because the the ball is smaller and there's di direct pressure so you you have to yeah. to control the ball and make sure it it's like an extension of your body so that you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. can pr protect it so do you also play some futsal uh, at Genko? It, it's it's maybe not necessary for you because you you do uh, the... Exactly. We do a lot of we do a lot of futsal things on the pitch, on because at the end of the day we want to make football players for the playing on grass. Um, our little ones sometimes they play they play futsal, but it's not in competition. Uh, they are free to do it. Uh, it's not that we say you cannot do it, but it's also not that we say you have to do it because our under nine they already trained four times and they have a game. So sometimes on Sunday they can play futsal, but this is up to them. It's not from the club uh, a thing that we say, okay, you need to do that. Because we know in our training sessions, we do we do a lot of similar things, playing small, small-sided games. Uh, we let the kids play free and using uh, use the, 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 the sole of the foot. Um, so doing a lot of, of 1v1s. Uh, so for us, it's occurring, uh, encouraging the, the kids to, um, to be creative. And, and and everything, but it's not that we say, okay, now we have to go and play futsal uh, because it's good for this, it's good for that. Me, my son and the club, we have a good philosophy and we think that a lot of things that we took out of the futsal and of the street and we use in the games and we use in the training session that uh, that you will have a very, very good combination. Yeah, and uh, another question I had is, uh, do you also work with goalkeepers maybe on, on the on yes. the team? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So our goalkeepers, they always get technical work. Always. All of them. All of them. So if you see our four goalkeepers now, we have, I think we are maybe unique in, uh, maybe in the world. We have uh, four goalkeepers, like the number one, two, three, and four, the All Academy, All Academy uh, products from uh, from the club. So that, that's something unique. Um, but if you see our 
goalkeepers like Thibaut Courtois, Kun Castells, all the guys that that left gang, uh, they're all good with the feet. It's because from small on, they will have coordination, technical exercises. Always. So before, when so for example, my son, when he do the the under 15, under 10, under 9, under 11. So the first 15 minutes is footwork. So all the goalkeepers are involved in the footwork. When I give a technical session uh, with the goalkeeper, uh, a lot of times I will start my session. The, the first ball will come from the footwork from the goalkeepers. And from there on, we will start the exercise. So it's a lot of... I, I just finished today with the, with the three goalkeepers from the first team. So they have they had uh, today twenty minutes with me uh, footwork. Okay. Oh, so, great. So it's very it's very important for us for them to be very comfortable on the ball, uh, to don't panic when they have pressure, to be good on left and right foot, and I think that's a, a very a very big key for us. Yes. And well, you you told uh, Courtois Crestils were reformed uh, in Genk, and the the, the current um, first team goalkeeper is is. Going to Leipzig, I think, yes, exactly. in, in the season. Um, yeah. But you, you also train other great names like Kulibali, Milinkovic Savic, Pozuelo, yeah. Ito, yeah. Bailey. Uh, yeah, the list is very long. Malinowski and Dindi, yes. Sanderberg, yes. Zagrova, Meile, um, and academy players like Benteke, De Bruyne, uh, yes. Rosa, Car Castagne, and... Carrasco, Yannick Carrasco. Yeah, Yannick Timothy Carrasco. Castagne. And Dennis he... Prat is a Leicester City. Artur Teat, because everybody thinks that he's not from us, but Artur Teat is an academy product also from Gang. Okay. So, uh... and yeah, my question was um, so, which one of these players most improved thanks, of your, uh, thanks to your, your um, presentations and oh. which technical details made this precise player become very decisive? I think, I think um, that uh, a player like uh, for me, Paul Onyachu, I think that he improved the most of everyone. The moment that I start working with him and the moment that he left uh, Gank. Um, because maybe a lot of people don't see everything, but for me, the, the, the eye for detail uh, in, in, in the three years that I work with him, from how he started and how he is now, uh, improved a lot, uh, a lot. So if... Is he the best player that I work with, uh, with footwork? No, but he's, he's for me, one of the players that for sure improved, uh, improved maybe the most, yes. And for someone like his profile, uh, well, uh, big number nine, it's very important to use uh, the arms as well. Uh, exactly. When, when you turn, is it something you, well, in that sense, you, you, you need to have a, a passive de defender in, in your training session. So are, yes. you, are you the passive defender, maybe? Uh, yeah, sometimes I he uses me as a central defender, but uh, we ask Paul uh, not to use his arms too much because we saw in the games that uh, a lot of referees, they will blow the whistle uh, too fast against him uh, because every time that he uses his long arms, uh, it was almost a foul always against him. So that's why it was very important for him to use also his hips. And instead of opening his whole arm, just to use a part of uh, the shoulder or, or part of the elbow, but not the elbow to go in the in the face, but just to keep, to still keep a, a distance between him, the opponent and the ball. So, uh, and of course with his long legs. So that's why we worked a lot of in, on his footwork and on his, his mobility to turn away from defenders, otherwise it will be very static and just using the arms. And so we always want to 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 make a better a player completer. And I think with Paul that was a a very big thing that we did. It was not always using his arms, using the arms and the hips in the correct way, but also uh, working a lot on his uh, mobility. Okay, very very interesting. And mentioning all these great names, Gank brought to the club. Uh, I'd like yeah. to know if the scouts make a, a, rela a relation with your work, uh, with your job at the office, since the player could have caught their eye tactically, for example, and as well as physically and mentally, but not technically. And maybe in another big Belgian club, the another big club, they would say we won't able we won't be able to sort of transform yeah. him on this aspect. Whereas in in Gang, they might write his name on their shortlist because they know you 
could turn him into a, a bargain. What was it ever the case, or is my imagination? Uh, to be honest, to be honest, yes, that's a little bit the case because um, you know I'm also a little bit involved in the scouting, so all the players that uh, the club recruit, uh, I'm also a little bit in the scouting uh, to give some names that players that I saw, uh, young guys uh, that I saw. For example, in, in Colombia or in Ecuador, so I'm following everything up. But also, they ask, uh, they they ask me also. So we saw this player. So what do you think about him? Do you think we can improve? Uh, and of course, everyone can improve as long as they want. So it's the mindset of a player that need to be open to improve. And uh, it don't matter if you're a big guy or a little guy. Uh, there is always, uh, you know, there was always space enough to improve, but you need to be open for it. Um, but here we have our scoutings uh, work from the club is very good. We have a lot of good, uh, uh, good eye for for players. So we we buy some young guys with potential. We sell them for a lot of money when it's when they are ready to leave. Um, so, but that's a good collaboration that that I have with them, uh, even in the younger teams and in the in the clubs and academy clubs in Belgium. I'm always looking for potential talent that that we can work with, uh, even with beautiful profiles, and maybe that the feet are not that good. Um, so we try to to try to bring them in because we're gonna we know we can we can improve the footwork of the players uh, with the hard work that we have in the in, in gang here. Okay, and talking about scouting, you you once posted a video on Twitter of uh, a, teen a teenager's five aside uh, indoor tournament and and wrote, "This is how you find potential in in Belgium, since well, it's yeah. a strong place for street football still, yes. uh, but doesn't that precisely complicate things when uh, when it comes to to scouting because it means a quite big part of your academy players might not come from the traditional way, which is being announced by a local partner club." Uh, all, all, how does that all work actually? No, you know, I'm, I'm, I follow everything up uh, a little bit, and if I see that there is an interesting tournament uh, where you, when you're gonna see uh, maybe a lot of uh, uh, kids that still are not playing an elite level, uh, or just playing in a smaller club, uh, you can always be be surprised in some details that you see, you know. And it's not that you see a player that you can say, okay, I want him uh, to gang, but maybe you can say, you can come on trial. You know, and and if you come on trial, maybe you you, you it will be an eye opener. So it's not that they play in a in a, in a local club or whatever, that that they don't have the potential to uh, to play in a, in a good club. So I'm I'm always looking for potential, always. But I think it's very important to have a little bit of eye to see certain things. Uh, it's not about how many goals that one scored, but maybe just two or three touch that he gave or one pass that he gave that the player gave that you say, okay, listen, this can be interesting to follow him up or even to, uh, to invite him to, uh, to gank and to let him train a few times with the, with the team. You have nothing to lose and it can be a win-win a situation for both. So that's always a thing that I'm, that I, me and the club is doing. So we are always looking for, for kids with potential. It's not just, okay, we know there is a good player and we're going to try to, to bring him in. We also go and look for players. Okay, and um, at younger ages, you well, you you don't need to. A kid can can make many errors, but if yeah. you see a spark of talent, you you need to to try him because regularity the, will come along the way. You there are exactly. so many kids who aren't regular at uh, fifteen, uh, yep. etc. And some scouts just don't say, nah, he, he misses too much. Okay, he's got some. Yep. Some interesting skills, but well, yes. he did it too much. So, is it something you you take care of as well? Yeah, for us, you know, we are we are very patient. Uh, we are very patient. We have underdeveloped kids and and gang that play a year younger because that they, they don't have the body, for example. But we are very patient with them. Uh, we are always looking at the the decisions, the 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 the, the passes, the 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 hunger that they have in the game. Um, uh, are they willing to learn? So for us, it's always, we are very patient. If you're not good enough, unfortunately, of course, then then it's maybe not the place for you to be in, in gang. But we are very patient. We are not the club that say, okay, we will cut every year uh, seven players from each team or, or whatever. So we always believe in our guys because our philosophy is to, uh, and maybe it's a bad word, but to produce or to make players for 
our first team. That's our main objective. Instead of buying, buying, buying players, we first want to see what we have in our own yard. If we don't have the, the, the guys that the first team coach or the club need, then of course we will go and look for young potentials uh, abroad. But first we will go and look in our in our garden what we have. For example, now we have Bilal Al Kanus in the first team. He's 18 years old. Uh, so he made his debut with Morocco against uh, Croatia in the World Cup at the age of 18. And exactly one year before that, exactly one year to the same day, he was playing with the under 18s. So in one year time, you go from the under 18, he went to the second team. Uh, and from the second team, he went to the first team. And now he's he's a starter. So we saw in him, in him big potential. We sold um, Christian Torsva to Sassuolo. So he was our number 10. And then was the option. What are we going to do? We're going to buy one for the money that we received from Christian. Or do we going to see what Bilal can do? And we, in our philosophy, we say, no, first, we have Bilal. Let's throw him, uh, like we say, in front of the Lions and see how he's going to do. If he do good, perfect. And now Bilal is still there, so we, we didn't need to buy other players. Bilal is there. He's maybe the best, uh, the, one of the best in the team. He's always a starter, and that's for us fantastic to see. So it's the fourth guy that from the academy is playing in the first team. So uh, so for us, that's that's uh, the main objective is, is to produce, and when you have them, to push them in the first team. And Bilal is a very technical player. Is it uh, someone you could have seen uh, on the street in Genk or uh, where uh, does this to be honest, come I know, from? I know Bilal when, when, for when he was 9 years old, 10 years old. He was playing in Anderlecht and he was uh, a little bit an underdeveloped player. So we have always been in touch uh, at the club to show that we have some interest. But it was always a little bit too early because... Of course, the parents, they didn't want to move the kid. And, and, and at the age of, of 14, Bilal really decide, okay, now I really need to go to gang because the way that gang work with playing young kids and, and uh, the philosophy of how we play uh, in, the, in the academy, it's not just winning, it's playing football, good football. And uh, the players always on, on the first spot instead of the team and uh, in, in, in gang. So he chose for our project, and and yes, it turned out to be to be very good. But but Bilal is known for, yeah, he's not. It's not that that we know him for four years now. So we know him for much longer. Yeah, and that's a big advantage of of uh, gang the the location. I mean, because Brussels is only one one hour. Uh, yes, uh, from yes, but still, it's a lot of it's a lot of traffic, so it's not that easy. Okay. And of course, you know, Anderlecht, uh, it's a big name. Yeah. Uh, it's a club from 100 years old, over 100 years old. We are only, only 35 years old, uh, Genk. So what we've done in 35 years, is, it's it's unbelievable. It's immense. Uh, the, the players that we produced and we took titles, we took cups, uh, or we played Champions League. So uh, I think it's it's a very big eye opener for a lot of people and parents also that saw what every time that they come and play here in the gang, they say, Wow, you guys really have a, a yes, a, a philosophy. You always you always play everyone. You always play good football. It's never just kick and rush football. So everyone that see us play, they recognize our our how do you say our way of play, our philosophy. So and that's for us the biggest key to to bring guys in to recruit players, and it's getting easier and easier because a lot of guys now they really want to come to to gank. So maybe 15 years ago it was a little harder, but now it's it's getting a little easier for us to to bring guys to bring guys in. And how is it with school? Uh, for example, Bilal, uh, he had to live in in Genk, or did he? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yeah, yes. Okay. So, so you... we have a, we have a very good collaboration with school. So we have host families. Uh, we work. Uh, so if kids, if we take a kid for from two two hours away, of course he will move. Uh, all the parents will move to a, to a house here, but most of the guys they just come here to a host family or they go to the the how do you call it the boarding school uh, here in Gang. So it's five minutes away from the from the academy. So the boarding school is twenty seconds away where they sleep from uh, you know from the school. So it's everything. The hospital is five minutes. So everything we have everything perfect uh, here around the around the. Yeah, so the I mean, show you this is. This is the academy, and the first team stadium is just next to the academy. Yeah, 
Yeah, so it's, it's all yeah, it's all very very connected. Uh, uh, the kids go to school. The bus the bus take bring them to the club. They train two times a day. They go back to school. They go to sleep. They study. So we have uh, everything. So it's it's it, it's good. It's it's good. Yeah, it's an, it's perfect environment to yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Grow and and... easy easy for the parents. Uh, so they don't have too much in the head of driving and everything because we have drivers. We have. We have buses, so so everything is it's it's perfect. Perfect. And coming back to the pitch, uh, what you try to do when you used to work with kids, and what your your son now does at, at Gang is make sure that you, you told you told it, make sure the power of street football continues to operate, but on the grass. And this is something that Belgium FA also tries uh, to encourage uh, at younger ages, especially with. Chris van der Hagen, who revolutionized the grass the grassroots categories with with kids now first play, uh, playing two v two in small spaces with yeah. two kids at each side in, instead of one, I believe. And is it something you had been waiting for a long time? Because I know you well, uh, for us here in Gang, uh, we don't do that. We don't play two v two, three v three, four v four. We always play with the youngest guys five v five. So this is also a thing that because the moment that you play two v two you are losing a lot of potential kids. So because in two, playing 2v2, you need a coach. If you play five pitches 2v2, you need five coaches. So if you're going to need five coaches, you're going to take quantity instead of quality. Okay. Of coaches. So for me, perf personally, I always prefer them to... If you play 2v2 and one is very tired, one kid is very tired, the it will get... It will go downhill. So if you play 5v5, kids can dribble five players. They can score goals. They can make decisions. They can do runs. They can pass balls in between. So it's a little bit... I like everything. 2v2, 5v5. But here in Gank, uh, we don't do that and we will never do that. We will always start with the 5v5 because the 5v5 for us is already going to the 8v8 and to the 11v11. But at, at we... At which cat uh, which category are you talking about? Because I think the two v two is just for six years old or yeah. But even here, yeah. But even here, we don't do that. Ah, uh, you have uh, six years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Under six categories. Yes, yes, yes. yes oh, okay. Yes. And but we I, play some, I... and sometimes we play three v three, and we play five v five. Okay, but I I didn't think um, but you're you're right. I, I mean, I I didn't think about it because if you have, well, two. Two very good players, and and in the other team you have only one very good player. Then, well, it's it's not a fun game. It's a one-sided yes. game. Yes, and also and also maybe after five minutes they are dead because they need to run, run. They get constantly the ball. So after five minutes you will see they are dead. Then maybe they're gonna sit down. So I always prefer them to to play just five v five. You know, but that's my opinion. Okay. You know, and it's, I'm not saying it's not good. But in gang we have our way of working. We think that this is for us the best. Uh, and we we will continue doing that. And I understand in grassroots, it's it's maybe other levels they can do that, but but uh, we for sure don't do that. Yeah, I mean in Genk you already have very talented, very good and very talented players at the age of six. So it's not like for for someone yeah. who's starting to play football, you know, to exactly, be, exactly might be better because he touches the ball more. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, exactly, but you can do. I mean, you can discuss about every. You can discuss about everything and say, okay, listen, uh, uh, they do two v two. But for me, it's always. I'm always thinking a little bit further. Uh, if you have five pitches of two v twos, then you need five coaches, and a lot of time those five coaches they need to get paid, and if you want, if you and a lot of clubs they don't want to pay a lot of money, so they're gonna take five coaches just to take five coaches, and if you just take five coaches to take five coaches, you will have less quality coaches. And if you're less quality coaches, they cannot focus on the detail of the, for example, the dribbling, the passing. And if you can, cannot focus on this, then you will have average players. And if you have average players, it's going to be difficult for them to come to uh, better clubs to get recruited. So uh, so I think in, 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 a, in a 5v5 at the, at the age of under seven, already there you can see some, you can see some, some kids that maybe dribble three players score good goals or maybe give one spectacular pass uh, in between three players because some kids are just a little further than the other one. So uh, so it's a balance. For me, 
uh, it's 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 all okay. But if you ask my opinion, I love for them to play five v five and to see ten kids playing football. And you also say the three v three sometimes. Uh yes, but but still five v five is is for us okay. a thing that we that we love to see kids doing special things, uh, dribbling three players instead of just one player. Yeah, that's true. In the end, they 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 want to have the ball as much as they want, and if of you course, only dribble course. one player, and then you are already uh, about He's scoring goals, it's it's hard. It's yeah, fifty it's fifty zero for a kid. The other kid. It's gonna start crying, and if you play five v five, you will always have two kids in each team that will battle for the ball, or you know, or, or will uh, will be a little bit at the same level. So, because dribbling one player or four players, I think it's a different. But do you think uh, it's it's still good at that age to put two goals at each side of the pitch so that there are more goals and uh, than only one? You mean four goals? Four goals, yeah. No, I mean for me, it's it's uh, why we play on two goals in the game. Yeah, that that's also the the, the problem with Funi you, I think, because you know, and defenders, I mean, the, the reflex in football, you want to protect the center, but exactly. if there's no goal in the center, exactly, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. it's not. So for me, for me, I that's my opinion, and I think also we in gang, we just play on two goals, and if we want to do something like tactical with the older guys, and you use four small goals. Uh, to like you say to protect some areas that's for the older guys okay or you can do a fun game uh, playing four goals but this is more I think with the, with the older guys you know uh, how do you call it uh, uh, um, a second form a middle a middle exercise of the uh, of the training session so for example you start with a passing form then you can do something like then then you go to to a game but at the end of the day uh, we need to play to two goals I want to score there. You want to score there. I need to protect this one, and you need to protect that one. So yeah. this is so, and we try to to develop the players from the the players from small on already with the mindset to one day go to the to the other side and play with the first team. This is uh, what we uh, what we try to do as fast as possible. Yeah, and I mean the the first reflex uh, for footballer is to to go inside so that you you well if you have two goals uh, at yeah yeah. It's it's a, yeah it's a little bit strange but but yeah but we yeah, we don't do that we don't mm -hmm. we can yeah. use that in the training session just for fun or something different or to do something different but yeah we don't do that too much no yeah I see that. maybe we can play maybe we do this with with all the older guys playing a rondo inside you know a rondo inside a five v two and the moment that those two guys receive the ball they can score on one of four goals something like this you know or, or you know or a little bit mind games. That we we put some colors and we say yellow and the ball go on this mm -hmm. goal, goal, something like this. But but we don't play games and I mean with the objective of oh we have four goals, two goals there. So this is not the thing that we uh, we encourage too much to to do. And to continue or your methodology, my yeah. question is: uh, Are your training sessions the fruit of your own experiences as a player? Because you used to play professional at Genk, uh, notably, or are there the results, uh, the result of re reflections you made after your career? I know your former colleague uh, Neil Jansen uh, went to Brazil for, for example, to get some ideas. As you also chose to explore more, more on this technical uh, aspect of football. So, how did you develop your methodology? Uh, so I'm doing it for 20 years now. So things that I saw that, that helped me in the game, um, you know, I tried to bring it on the pitch. Um, I never went to see uh, abroad if I can learn from somebody or, or because I have my own met methodology. Uh, Niels, you know, Niels was just a, a, a team coach. And before I left, you know, I told Niels, try to, you know, to to do what I'm doing because I put him a little bit under my wings to to give my my philosophy. Um, so he did it in a, in a decent way. Uh, now my son is doing it, but uh, I don't think you need to go abroad to to find better technically things. I need to be you need to be creative as a person, and I think you need to see the need of a player um, to become technical good. But but of course. As a coach, you need also to have uh, a good technique because you need to show it 
to the players. You cannot say, okay, we will do this and you cannot show it. So that's the thing that I'm always working on. Like every day I, I'm, I'm playing football. I'm almost 48, but I'm always playing football and doing doing my stuff on the pitch. Um, you can always learn from every coach, but of course you can also learn how not to do it from coaches. Um, so we have our philosophy in our head. We saw that in all the years that I'm doing it, I saw that it helped uh, players because... You know, players give you a lot of credits. Uh, they mention you in some interviews. Or... And to continue your methodology, uh, I watched a rare bit of your training sessions that are available on the internet. And I'm pretty sure some coaches would be surprised to see you used uh, you, you, you used to do unopposed uh, analytical exercises with the kids. Because, you know, many are so much into stereotypes that they, they would say, How come he pretends to, to bring street football to the pitch if kids don't need to be creative? But learning new skills is precisely some, somehow contributing to, be, to a better creativity, right? Yeah. But for me, uh, the, the very most, the, the most important thing for me is first uh, to make the kids comfortable on the ball. That's the most important thing. As, le as well as left foot, as right foot, as passing on a good speed. Uh, receiving the ball, uh, taking the ball in a good touch, uh, having a first good touch, because you can dribble, 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 and be creative, but if your first touch is bad, you will never make it. So you need to have, um, uh, you need to try to, to develop, in a, in, like I always say, in a total package. Here in Gank, we give a lot of passing drills, we give dribbles. Uh, it's not that they don't play 1v1, 2v2, 3v3. We do it all. We do it all. But, but to be good in a 5v5, in a 1v1, You need to be good on the ball. And how can you be good on the ball? Is to practice first, unopposed. And my exercises is a lot of time, a bit of unopposed going to opposed work. So you can mix everything what you want. But don't forget to make the players um, comfortable on the ball. Because if they're not comfortable on the ball, they will panic, they will kick balls in the, in the stands. They will panic, they will lose the ball, and you will give away stupid goals. So you need to make them comfortable on the ball. And how can you do that? First, to do unopposed work, to let them dribble, to feel comfortable on the ball, to make them left and right foot not perfect, but as good as possible. And then you will can you then you can do in a tra team training session, the coaches will always do opposed work. I'm a technical coach in individual work. I need to make sure that me and my son, we need to make sure that in the opposed work, in the 5v5, You will have creativity and you will have good players not losing stupid balls, not losing his first touch, giving a good ball and good speed. But on the other side, if you see the list that we worked with, that we developed here, I think unopposed work with a lot of guys, it, 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 it was not a bad thing for them to do. Because if you see them now at, at the highest level playing Champions League, uh, eight guys from the World Cup uh, coming out of the Academy of Belgium uh, is from Genk, I think something must be good. Yeah, I think as well, and pre um, and you you know what some 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 a lot of people uh, I think forget is for example Neymar, he used to be very he took very bad decisions uh, when he was in Brazil, but he still was so good with his feet that you know he could look up and yeah. learn and see a lot of things. And with time, you know that his um, the decision making will, will improve. So, I mean, I, I would always go for the for the for the players who, are, who have the best ball mastery uh, there is, because exactly. then it will be easier exactly. for them to 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 have the head up and look for. Yeah, because I always say, you know, uh, a lot of coaches they always say, uh, this guy got perfect brain and he got this and he read this, of course, but they need to feed, because otherwise. Uh, I think you are a very smart guy. Other th otherwise, you always will also will be a player if you have very good brains. But if God didn't give you the feet, the good feet, then you can be a, a technical manager or you can be a, whatever you want, but you can never be a player. So you need, um, it's not unfortunately, you need both. You can have, but I prefer to have very good feet and just a little bit of brain, a brain that you can work on that have very good brain and no feet because with no feet, you're never going to be a player. Yeah, it's, that's it, it is, it is, it, it, it is very simple, but it's it's like that. Otherwise, a lot of geniuses, people, yeah, it will be easy to make them football players, but it's 
they need to have good feet. Otherwise, you 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 cannot become a, a player. And if you have both, if you have good feet and brain, and then you are a top player, and then you will play, of course, uh, on the on the highest stage. Yeah, and uh, talking about uh, ball master. Well, what you basically say is, we um, it's 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 easier to to become better with twenty at uh, in game intelligence as with t in technique. I mean, if you if you don't have good feet at, at twenty, it will be difficult for you to almost impossible. Yeah, but but even uh, but even Mahim, even at the age of 10, 11, So if we go and recruit players. Yeah. And we see a, a very smart kid, but he cannot play football. Yeah, we will not recruit him. I mean, we cannot say, okay, this kid, he looked very smart, but he take all the balls out or away or, or whatever. So they need to have, they need to have both a little bit. And of course, you cannot have all geniuses, but you need to know that, okay, sometimes you have a player that it's very good in intuition, but the decision making is not so good. He can still make the difference in in a 1v1, in a, in a creative moment that he has. You know what I mean? But if you don't have that, uh, if you if you only have the brain and no feet, yeah, the moment it go a little less, yeah, you cannot make the difference with your with your feet. So so it's we're always hoping to find both. You know, they say they say you need to be fast, you need to be this, you need to be that. Yeah, I think you need to be fast in the head. So Busquets is not a very fast player, but he's smart in the head. But Busquets is smart in the head and he got very decent feet. So he reads the game different than other ones. If you have Busquets uh, with his brain and if his feet don't work, yeah, then you will have a very, just a, just an average player. Yeah, and if he, if your feet enables you to, to do, well, no, certain skills, a lot more of, yeah. well, great pa passes, difficult passes, yeah. the, Difficult yeah, skills. Exactly. You you'll become well. You it will be hard for you at the beginning because you have so many possibilities because you can do so many things. It will it will be hard for you to pick the right decision. But with time, uh, you'll become better than the than the others. Of course, of course, of course, of course. That's uh, this is how it is. Yeah, and a way to 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 improve his ball mastery is doing well exercises alone. Um, and yeah, but you can do. You... So for example, we do um, we do a lot of footwork. Like for the first fifteen minutes, ten to to fifteen minutes, we do coordination exercise. So it's one player, one ball. Yeah, the coordination exercise is everything with with hip work, ankle work, knee work. It's just to to make them supple and comfortable on the ball. That's the first one. It's, it had nothing to do with, with ladders <laughs> going on the pitch and and I don't know. No, it's just think work and using both feet. And making everything supple. Then we go over to combination. Combination is four skills and one. So a step over, uh, aka, uh, a turn. So everything in one. So we do this because we know that if we make the players good in all areas at one time, in the game they will choose one of the things. What they feel most comfortable. In. So if you don't do that, if you only do the step over or, or, or a cut, they will only have that. So we always try to give them combination. And it's up to the player what he does in the game and when he does it in the game. So we are we are just there to make them comfortable on the ball and give them as much as creativity as we can. Things that they don't learn, that they don't have time for to learn on the street, in futsal or at home, whatever. We, like my son and I, we are always trying to, to do crazy things for them. So for them to to feel comfortable, to have a little fun with them. But those things are always things that you can still use in the game. Even if it's a, to have a clean first touch or to dribble your defender or with the pressure in the back to do a crazy turn that they don't expect. So we're always thinking about giving them as much as possible options for them to use in the game. But these combination drills, uh, uh, skills, my, my yeah. question was, is it like, for example, you, you're alone, you, you just do it, uh, yeah, where you are, it's one skill and yeah. another. Right, no, 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 no. This is all in one. This, for example, I take the ball, I do a step or with a cut and an elastic, or like you guys call it, or whatever. So it's all 
it's all in one. It's one movement, and it's it's just always uh, running. So it's not just standing still. It's so, always the ball, okay. the ball is always moving. Okay, ball it's not standing still. Okay. Yeah. Then the moment that we say, okay, we're gonna do a, an, an exercise, like an exercise with the team, then we have all the players. They we put them in a side in, in a certain form where we want to see like game patterns or whatever. But we combine it with uh, we combine it with footwork. So we start with footwork on a post, and then they will go in an opposed work. For example, they come in a 1v1, in a 2v3, in a 5v3, uh, in the box. Uh, they go in a 1v1 to the goalkeeper. So everything they need in the game, they will have in a technical session. Of course, not all in one session, but we try to mix everything. If I work with the second team, and with the, uh, with the first team or the second team, for example, uh, I look the opponent, they play with five in the back, they give a little space uh, they give they give a lot of space away in the corners or whatever. So I will do a technical footwork first before going in to the five v three or the seven v five. So this is the thing to to get uh, uh, over tall on, on the right side to run the pocket to do a cross pass in the in the in the pocket. So but we always start with like we say dry footwork for them to be good on the ball. From the footwork going to short passing and the passing we go into a a 5v3 or 4v2 or, or whatever. So it's always a combination of everything. But first, with the younger guys, you need to make sure that when they come in the, in the 5v3, they will be good on the ball. So how can they be good in the ball to have repetition, repetition, repetition? So my son, he will he do a lot of 2v2s, 3v2s, uh, overlaps, but also with footwork before going in the... And it's all in one session. Yeah, and you, you said before uh, combination skills. You do coordination skills, and that's not yeah. that's not the the typical coordination. Well, that's with the ball, because here we well for coaches coordination means always uh, having a ladder and doing steps. But mm -hmm. in fact, that I I'm a total uh, I'm I'm an opponent of this because. Uh, I mean, I've seen so many players I would qualify it as technically gifted, but who are yeah. so bad at doing such coordination uh, exercises yeah. and yeah. conversely. So what's yeah. your point on the topic? So for me, that's me personally. We have other coaches like physical coaches and everything. They they use ladders and they do, also do coordination exercises, but different coordination. This is without ball. And so my coordination exercises are always for them to make sure they're always good and balanced with the ball on the feet and everything have to be left and right foot. So it's a lot of think work. It's never just do this now or with your left foot. It's always left, 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 right, left, right, left, right, or left, left, right, right. So it's coordination, but all with ball and with turns. So it's a lot of think work. So for example, if a new player come in, it's a disaster. It's really a disaster. So they, they really think I can, I cannot play football. Because you see the other guys that are here, they, for them it's just brushing your teeth. They, they just do everything with the ball. But at the end of the day, you will see that he will pick up with the coordination. And if he has the coordination, it will be easier to do the technical training sessions, what we have. Because it's going to be very easy if you do the footwork, left or right foot, with a lot of times the think work that, that I use in my session. So it's never just playing from A to B. It's always playing and going maybe from A to C to a different part. It's just not just following the ball. So it's a lot of movement thing that you need in the game. So that's why we do a lot of coordination exercise with ball. So it's a ball mastery, but a lot of think work. So your ball mastery coordination skills uh, exercises, it, may, it might be that you're standing still and, and doing skills. Well, we, it, it, it is... It. It is standing, moving. yeah. It is standing still, but the ball is always moving, and okay. it's not just standing still on one position. It's, yeah, it's, but it's, you can you can a little a little bit. You move a little bit, but it's it's hard. But it's a lot of turns. It's it's a little bit complicated, but uh, even there, you see that it improved uh, the the strength of your ankles, of your knees, your hip work. So it's it's a lot of detail, a lot of detail work. Yeah. Yeah, because you know when I do I do. Maybe not the exact same, but I, I try to do uh, such exercises, uh, ball mastery exercises, and yeah. and I have the impression uh, it's not well. Um, well, here in my country, the it's not something that that you that you 
see a, a lot uh, yeah. in training yeah. sessions because you know people think oh but th these are no these are not skills you do in then on the pitch against an, an opponent because it's just ball mastery but in the end ball mastery yeah. makes makes you master the ball easier and then you, but, my, but, but my question but my question is do you take a ladder on the pitch a ladder yeah no Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. So they, they, they say, a lot of people say, ah, you don't do this, you don't do this in a game. Correct? But, but they a lot, break. But a they lot, break of, a lot of people do water, work, footwork on a ladder. Yeah, you don't take a ladder on the pitch. <laughs> That's true. And, and I mean, it's, it's exactly the same, the same mindset. Because it, what's allows, uh, it's, it's proprioception because you the best dribblers Mitoma and Neymar they they don't they don't have to look the ball when they when they when they're dribbling they yeah. they look at the well, le the opponent's legs well, coming and, or not coming or yes yes and, and that's what allows uh, ball these that's what allow uh, allow you the these ball mastery exercises yeah. because yeah. you you try to do skills uh, at the beginning you can look a bit at the ball but yeah. in the end you want to do them fast and exactly. stop looking right Exactly. At the end of the day, you know, in the beginning, you're always, you know, always thinking and looking at the ball for, oh, I, I, I need to do this. I need to focus on the ball. But there will always be a moment that it's it's like brushing your teeth. You just do it easily. Uh, but, you know, I mentioned this in in in, in another interview, uh, what I had, uh, you know, if you go drive a car in the beginning, if you're learning to drive a car, yeah, you don't go on the street immediately. So you go on a post. So you're going to work, you're going to trip. Uh, First, empty you're going to drive in an empty parking. Why? Because you don't want to bump on nobody. So it's on a post. So first, you need to do that. And then when, when your dad saw, okay, now you're ready to, to drive on the street. Now you do a post work and then you go and drive on the street. So it's a lot of, you know, people are always looking at at, at certain things. You know, you have now you have the uh, uh, cognitivity work, you know, with, with fit lights and everything. And it's good. It's good. But for example, if you... If you do individual work and you let the lights go, and for example, the green light go on, and the player need to to play a ball to the green light, for example, to to small goal. Yeah, of course it's not bad, but don't forget that the speed of the ball is very important. So it's always better to have maybe a guy running in a green shirt, running in a spade, and you say green, so he can give the last ball in a good speed to the guy running. In the space, because otherwise he's gonna just play the ball in the green and in, in, in the green goal. He's just gonna play it in. It's in. It's in. But the the detail is the speed of the ball. The ball speed is very important because in the game, if you if the ball is too slow, a defender will will steal the ball. If the ball is too hard, you will lose the ball. So you need to work on the and the guy in the green shirt. You're working on his first touch, taking the ball forward to the goal so you can do a combination of of everything is it bad to do the fit lights of course not of course not it's not bad but don't forget you can also do a lot of other things with choosing colors for example uh you know uh, brain work but do it in a combination do it with running players uh, put four guys with a yellow shirt a green shirt blue shirt white shirt and the moment that you say uh, yellow that they need to pass the ball to a, a yellow runner uh in the pocket or whatever. So you have a combination of, of, of everything. So you need to be open for everything, but don't forget the detail. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that point. And uh, well, if you if we stay on the technical aspect, you also need to spin the ball. When you do a pass, you, you need to, to choose the spin. Do you go for the exactly. left spin exactly. or right spin? You need spin? to get a chip. Yeah. Get a chip in a good, in a, in a good way. So, so so it's a lot of, a lot of detail that you need to work. So you're never done. I mean, uh, you never done working, so you never done finding out. You never done seeing little mistakes that the that the first team player uh, we saw last week, Liverpool, uh, the goalkeeper giving the ball uh, away. Uh, Thibaut Courtois had to touch on his knee. So you never done working. So you're never too old to to learn and keep practicing. Because if you don't practice, if you don't learn, you will lose. That that's very simple. Okay, well, Michel, thank you very much for your time and and your answers. Uh, I no wish problem. you all the best. No and I hope I can come to Gank once to to watch a game because uh, I've seen some highlights of the 
of the goals you scored uh, this yeah. season and the players you have and well yeah. Uh, like, you're always welcome. Yeah. You're always welcome. You're always Perfect. welcome. No and it's so pleasant to watch uh, gameplay. Like L Luca Oyen is all is also. Yeah, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Luca okay. always coming. Luca always here uh, is in the academy for when he was six years old. So, okay. Uh, our captain Brian Heine is now uh, he's twenty five now, twenty six almost. He's in the academy for when he was under eight. So I'm working with him for for almost 17, 16 years old. Sixteen years old. It's our captain. It's fantastic to see. So, uh, but it's all about the philosophy and the development that we are, what that we have here in Genk. So it's all pulling on the same court and uh, and working all with one objective is to make players for the first team. That's the thing that we are very good at. Yeah, and I love that. So all the best once again, Michael. Thank you very much, my friend. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.